So a very interesting chat today on AM Buffalo. John Lipsitz, thank you so much for joining us. Always a pleasure to chat with you. It's also a pleasure to chat with you. Today is interesting because we're going to talk about something that you have had a lot of experience with over the years. That's juries and trying a case in front of a jury and how complicated that can be. Well, when you try a case in front of a jury and it's a negligence case, personal injury cases are usually a variety of negligence cases. You have to prove to the jury that the defendant or the defendants breached the duty of care with respect to the plaintiff. They did something, for example, fail to warn about a dangerous product when they should have warned about a dangerous product. Then you have to show that the failure or that a breach of duty was the cause of an injury. In other words, did the injury occur because of what the defendant did or was there something else that caused the injury? And then once you've established what lawyers call a proximate cause that resulted in the injury, then we talk about damages. And that's where the jury gets to evaluate the consequences of that injury in terms of somebody's life. If the injury is, for example, a traumatic injury, uh, an accident that results in paralysis, uh, brain trauma, the loss of a limb, then you're talking about physical pain, mental anguish, and that could involve a sense of embarrassment or anxiety. Um, And you're also talking about loss of the quality of life. So it's really more than just saying there's a bad guy, there's the person that's been injured, and then here's the solution. As an attorney, you really need to be so adaptable in the courtroom. What are some of the hurdles that the best attorneys have to overcome when they are presenting a case to a jury? Well, you you want to make it real. So you, you need to use the skill that you have to help a jury understand the level of pain and suffering that a person is experiencing. In almost every case where you've got a a condition that's being treated by doctors, you're going to get the hospital records and the doctor's records and look to see whether painkillers are being administered, which is a pretty good indication that the level of pain is significant. Then there'll be a back and forth discussion, maybe in the jury box later on when they're evaluating the case and deliberating whether the pain was very intense and should be compensated at that level or whether the use of the painkillers uh, dialed back the pain. and Perhaps things are not a, as stark a problem for the plaintiff as they might otherwise have been. There are a lot of factors. There's got to be a lot of pressure on you when you're in that courtroom and you are knowing that if you don't get that information to the jury in the right way, it could make a huge difference financially for your client. Well, sure, because there, there's no particular science to the evaluation of pain and suffering damages by a jury, or even to the presentation of the of the evidence. And juries, as with most issues that come before them, are expected to draw on their common human experience. So you you gotta appeal to the common humanity of, of the jury, but focus on your plane, focus on the facts of this case. We are lucky that we have your team of attorneys here in Western New York. John Lipsitz, thank you so much for joining us on AM Buffalo. Thank you, Melanie. It was a pleasure.